Welcome to BIV Today, the daily podcast from the newsroom of Business in Vancouver. I'm Kirk LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief. On the eve of the voting to elect a new leader of the BC Liberal Party, one of the candidates tweeted that if he loses, he's not going to run for office if Kevin Falcon wins. It was quite a shot across the bow as the membership starts to cast ballots today to tomorrow and Saturday to choose a successor to Andrew Wilkinson. The candidate who uh, fired that shot is Val Litwin. He's the former CEO of the BC Chamber of Commerce. We've had him on the podcast before. We have him now. Good to see you. Thanks, Kurt. Thanks for having me here. Uh, um, why'd you do it? Yeah, sure. It was a big tweet. I get it. Um, it caused waves yesterday. You know, I, I got in this race, Kirk, to beat the NDP in the next election. But first, the BC Liberal Party has to defeat the past. And what is this race about? This race is about renewal. That's what I've been talking about this whole time. But, but I'm talking about true political and brand renewal for the party. I want this party to succeed. I want this coalition to succeed. I want the province to succeed. But how do we do that? That, that is the question I've been posing to the electorate this whole time. We do that by showing that this party has renewed, that it's opened up and that it deserves to lead the province again. So my tweet yesterday, it was a, it was a big one, but it's been consistent with my message since day one that what got the BC Liberal Party to here will not get us to there. It won't take us into the future because too much has changed. We have to, Kirk, we have to win over a whole new, <laughs> you have experience in politics. We have to win over a whole new generation of voters. And we need to con convince the wider public that they can find a political home. And, and people are looking for transparency. They're looking for accountability and they are looking for leadership. And uh, hey, you know, they say if you're not growing, you're dying. The truth is the BC Liberal Party, BC Liberal Party, we've been losing support for years. We're coming off a disastrous election result and the old way of doing things won't cut it. So my commitment is twofold in this race, Kirk. My commitment is to win. My commitment is to renew this party. Why, why doesn't Kevin Falcon offer you that opportunity though, given that he has without question, the most experience of any of the candidates in this race and were he to be leader, he would, have probably the most facility with all of the uh, all of the processes and techniques of politics of the legislature of the system he's been in cabinet he's been a deputy premier what, what is it about his leadership that you can't abide yeah it's a great question because i i take nothing away from his political talents his uh, experience in the role his capabilities He's been there and done that. I get it. But what I what I do take issue with Kirk is the experience that that worked during the old winning formula for the BC Liberal Party is the experience that will work moving forward. So what I'm talking about is actually leadership and accountability, most of all, from what I see coming from that camp. So you would know um, there is only, as far as I know, only one campaign in this race, and there are seven campaigns that hasn't raised issue with the incredible volume of non-compliant memberships that have been signed up mm. into the party. That's an issue. We've heard distinct talk around promises and deals. Some campaigns are already making promises for roles and seats if they win. Uh, if you represent the establishment in the way it's always been, how do you expect to renew? And even around uh, the incident with Diamond Eitzinger, uh, we were told there was gonna be an investigation, a report. Uh, to my knowledge, I've seen no report and follow-up. So. Kirk, for me, this has less to do with the skills and the abilities and the style of leadership. And I have worked in enough organizations, I have led enough organizations to know that sometimes you have to, from a core value perspective, choose who you want to do business with, right? And for me, that tweet yesterday was standing in a place of integrity. And I take nothing away from Kevin, the individual. I don't think that style of leadership is what it will take to bring new voters to the boat and frankly, open us up. Well, his, his rejoinder to the um, criticism about some of the uh, membership non-compliance is that, listen, we're, we're dealing here with a lot of uh, newcomers to British Columbia, people who want to participate in the process. Uh, people who maybe don't have the same facility with the English language and therefore they're they're being helped by other people to fill out their forms or they're filling them out not 
terribly well on their own. Um, and, that, um, and that by um, aggregating uh, complaints like this, um, they wind up racializing uh, the criticism and all this. Um, how do you answer that? That's one narrative. I have, look, the BC Liberal Party, do we want to grow? Absolutely. Is everyone welcome? 100%. We don't want to send anyone packing. But there are rules in the race. The rules say a compliant member has to have an email address, a distinct email address, an address, a phone number. There's a number of things, the a bar you have to cross. So let's make sure every member, no matter your background, no matter your religion, no matter what riding you live in, it doesn't matter to me, your ethnicity, your background, let's make sure memberships are compliant because Kirk, the biggest thing we're fighting against right now out there in the public is a perception that we can't keep our house in order, that we're a party that engages in old political tactics. And so I've, I've said many times in this campaign, our brand is not what we think we are and what we say about ourselves. Our brand is what others think, feel and say about us. And so uh, a non-compliant member is a non-compliant member, full stop, treat everyone the same, Let's go in there and, and find out because it, it, I'll finish with this, Kirk. Political parties have a long history of transactional relationships with communities to get, to get to the finish line, right? And one of the things I'm saying, one of my messages in renewal is I am ready to end the transactional relationship we have had for generations. It is time for meaningful engagement. I have no interest in parachuting into a community capturing a bunch of votes, saying goodbye, winning the race, and never going back to see them again. We need to change how we do it. That's how we renew. That's how we gain momentum as a new, modern, and invigorated party. I, I'm, uh, I'm not going to try to question your move here on the, on the eve of this, but one thing that it does raise is, is the notion that, you know, here, here you are, somebody who wants to uh, bring yourself into politics, into public life in a different way than you were as the CEO at the chamber, and yet, potentially, you're you're opting out of this at the last minute if if Kevin Falcon, one of the perceived front runners, obviously, um, wins. Why not? Why not kind of get in, um, join it, participate in it, um, grow in it, and then work for the next time if that's what you want to do in terms of leading it. Yeah. So this is what leadership looks like for me. I mm. took a year out of my life. I resigned from my job. I kissed my paycheck goodbye. I have two young kids. I'm not a simming, sitting MLA. I'm not drawing a paycheck from anywhere. I am in it to redefine what success looks like for this party and to renew this party. And so I am standing in a place of core values and I am signaling to everyone as I've been signaling through this whole campaign that I will bring a different style of leadership. We will turn the page and Kirk, I have now had the chance to speak with literally thousands of people <laughs> in this race because it's been a long one. And I can tell you on that tweet last night, yes, there was some trolling. There were a lot of people that said, hey, thank you for taking a stand. Thank you for saying that. But we got hundreds of calls, emails, texts, and DMs from people all over the province. So we know there are a group of people sitting on the sideline waiting to come into this party. And this is, again, like I said, my commitment to leadership and being clear. I also don't want to pull a classic political trick where I campaign from over here or over there and then govern from the other side. I'm walking right down the middle. People know exactly what they're going to get with me. And so uh, this is about transparency and accountability for me. Um, you know, of course, you're in it to win it. Um, who isn't, uh, I would say. So now if somebody else but Kevin Falcon wins, um, are you prepared to still run? And Terrific question. Terrific question. Absolutely. And and Kirk, let's remember, who said in the first debate they're only in it to win this race and be the leader or nothing? It wasn't me. <laughs> it was yeah. Kevin Falcon. Um, mm -hmm. I've just said I'm not prepared to be a part of the old playbook if one candidate wins. We have a fabulously diverse, smart, committed, intense energy field. I'll be honored to serve with any of those people. Uh, what the Kevin Falcon campaign is putting out there, the tone, the accountability, uh, the behavior doesn't work for me. And I'm putting that flag in the sand so people know, because there are people out there, Kirk, watching that don't want a halfway renewal process. 
They want a true deep and lasting one because they think that's what it'll take to win. And I'm putting myself out there as their number one choice. What do you think it says, Val, about the BC Liberal Party that it has been, um, so far anyway, unable to, um, to basically satisfy what are six of the seven campaigns and their complaints? Yeah, I mean, this goes back to what I've been saying, right? what got us to here won't get us to there. I mean, the BC Liberal Party isn't the only political party in the history of leadership races and even general elections um, that has, you know, pulled from the old playbook. Um, but what I am saying to the party and the members and anyone who's paying attention is we actually have an opportunity to become a modern accountable organization, political organization. That is our opportunity. We can walk through that door or we can do a partway renewal and we can hope everything's going to be fine. Batten down the hatches, hatches and, and uh, you know, roll the dice in 2024. But the world has changed too much. Kurt, 61% of the population now in BC is under the age of 40. You've heard me say that many, many times. These generations coming up that we are hoping and praying will be a part of the political process moving forward. They grew up in a totally different world and they don't appreciate the old school way of doing politics and running these races. They want to see transparency. They want to see accountability and they want to know that their voice counts. That's the most important thing. When we lose the rule of law, we lose what we cherish most here in Canada that everyone's voice matters and everyone voices, voices, uh, everyone's voice counts. So we've sent letters into the party. You know about that. Um, I believe in good faith the party has attempted to do some of the, the scrutineering and audit. And I just hope they will do more. And um, this is the most important signal we can send to the voter base here in BC. As you know, in the last couple of days, uh, Vikram Bajwa, who I think originally thought he might run uh, in this in this campaign, um, has filed a, a suit at the uh, Supreme Court asking uh, the court to uh, not delay the vote, but delay the vote result uh, until there is a, a, a full-fledged audit in all of this. Are you supportive of that? What I What gives me faith is that there are people outside of this political race that are watching with very close, sharp eyes. And they're prepared to take a stand the way we have in our letter to the party and the way six of the campaigns in this race have to the party. So um, I can't predict the outcome. And I do think I believe in evidence. I believe in uh, making sure the research is done to find out exactly what's happened here. So I'm casting no aspersions, but uh, I support us getting to the bottom of this. Yeah. Was that something that your campaign considered at any point? The idea of, of taking this toward the court and not just trying to um, deal with it internally with letters and calls and meetings back and forth with the uh, leadership election committee. No, it, it was it was not something we considered because we we have faith um, that the party has the ability and the wherewithal to get to the bottom of this. And we said as much in our letter. So, uh, but again, for me, Kirk, this goes back to why we're sitting down having this conversation. The BC Liberal Party has a brand problem, and that is something that we built up over time in the minds of the voters here in BC. We have the opportunity in these next three days to change that brand perception, and I hope people will turn the page and choose what comes next in a future for this party, which is a valid when led BC Liberal Party. Um, it's a, probably a bit of a soft question, Val. Uh, what do you think John Horgan's thinking about all this? What is John Horgan thinking about all this? Well, I, I, I can't uh, pretend to know what's, what's in his mind, but I, I'm sure he's watching with great interest what the members of this party choose for their next chapter, as we're all on tenterhooks as well. Um, I think that um, this is a big moment for the BC Liberal Party. He knows it. We know it. Everyone who's watching knows it. The media knows it. And we do have a generational opportunity here to do something different. Every time the BC Liberal Party has picked a new generation leader in a new direction, it's, begin the, it's been the beginning of a winning uh, streak for the BC Liberal Party. We have that chance to do that now. Um, last couple of areas. Um, you know, in one of the debates that I, I watched, I watched them all, um, you actually were um, pretty tough uh, in questioning Ellis Ross. 
about climate change. Um, and and Mr. Ross uh, gave you an answer, I thought, that still uh, kept you uh, scratching your head a bit about um, whether he associates uh, human conduct with, uh, with climate change and uh, whether that's still a debatable issue. Um, if you're prepared to serve under him, um, doesn't that make you somewhat complicit in, in a viewpoint like that? That's a great question. Ellis is a formidable leader, and I'm quite sure I know where his heart is on this issue, which is I know he believes in the preservation of environment and climate performance. Um, but I do have concerns, and I raise them in that debate around some of the signals he sent in social media around human accelerated climate change, which is to say the scientists don't agree. Well, my belief is they do, and the science uh, suggests that um, humans have a, a very serious role to play in our emissions um, historically today and tomorrow. So, but I keep and hold space for Ellis to define a clearer position on that because I know through his actions, he has done many things in his time as a community leader um, to do good by the environment. But let's talk about being a political party that's competitive in 2024. Whoever leads this party has to send clear unequivocal signals that we as a party believe in human accelerated climate change, because if we don't, we will be disqualified at the ballot and none of our other brilliant policy ideals will, will matter. So I see this very much as a table stakes piece we have to get clear on, but I, I give Ellis Ross space to come out and um, define that and have clarity on that for people. But you don't give Kevin Falcon space to say, look, um, I had to do some, you know, some things in winning in order to have a stronger purpose down the road. You just don't think that he's um, revised himself sufficiently for this, for this question. period? Yeah, it's a terrific question. So what I said about Ellis is that articulated view of his around the environment, it worries me, but his actions have shown me other things. Hmm. The other thing, the, the, the tweet last night about the Falcon campaign is about the behavior I've seen historically and that has been presented time and time again in this campaign. And for me, actions do speak louder than words. And I am ready to collaborate. This, is, this has been my job, Kirk, as the CEO of the BC Chamber of Commerce. That's a tough job. It is very similar to this job. You're working with hundreds of thousands of stakeholders. You're managing personalities and dreams and visions for the future. Um, I have proven I can work with everyone, but when I have a choice, I won't work with just anyone. And that is what core value driven leadership is about for me. And I have sent that signal. People know where I stand. I've been transparent um, and now they can make a choice. Um, last question, Val, uh, you, you say that you won't work with uh, work work under Kevin Falcon, but let's say you win. What do you say to the Kevin Falcon supporters who wonder whether you're ever going to give them the time of day now? Yeah, you are welcome in this party. I mean, Kirk, I, I've managed so much organizational change and organizational conflict in my time. Um, there is always an opportunity for um, team members that maybe weren't leading the charge on a particular message to come back and say, hey, look, I would like to be a part of this renewal and push. And I've said many times in this race too, Kirk, for me, renewal is not about revolution. I'm not here to clean house. That is not what this is about. I have said many times, we need to tap into the wisdom and the experience that sits in this party because we have, to, we have to take that and we have to splice it with the next generation leaders that I hope will take this party deep into its next chapter. So it's not an either or thing for me, but it is about leadership. It is about accountability. And what I am seeing from that camp, uh, I don't see a role for myself under that kind of leadership. And so uh, to the supporters of Kevin Falcon, I respect who you've been supporting. I respect the time, the energy, the money you have given to that campaign. And I still wanna keep this party as a big tent party. Let's move forward together. You'll be welcome in my party. And in fact, I will need to tap into your wisdom and experience to do the job that we need to do to win in 2024. So I hope that's clear, Kirk. Thank you for asking. Um, the, um, uh, I, I will squeeze in one more question here because uh, it's just what I do typically. Uh, I remember that I needed to ask one more thing. Um, where are you going to be Saturday? Uh, what's the, uh, what, what, 
what's the logistics of waiting for a vote, Presum presuming, of course, that the court case is unsuccessful and there's not a delay in the result? I'll be at the wall center with all the other candidates and uh, our supporters, our teams. I'll be there with my, my partner, Joy. Our boys will be home asleep in bed, um, but we'll be uh, looking very much forward to hearing the results and finding out what this membership is saying about the future of the party. The computer is going to know. Doesn't that kind of drive you crazy? Yeah. You know, that, that, you know, the, there's this kind of phony suspense that gets yeah. drawn out. Oh, it, it's and you know they they kind of take an hour and thirty minutes to do the next ballot. I mean, the, the computer's got the result. Literally, yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I don't know, love. given the modern technology that's supporting this, that we need a drum roll for this one. Um, I, I feel like it's all digital. We should know pretty quick. So I, I have a feeling we're we're going to learn the results uh, much faster than we normally would in historical races. Let's let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, last time it took pretty much you know. Dragged out quite a bit. Anyway, we'll see. Um, Val, thanks so much for giving us your time here uh, on the eve of this, right, well, in fact, right during the vote itself. Um, and uh, best wishes. I really take appreciate care. it. Thanks for the conversation. Thank you. Val Litwin is one of the BC Liberal leadership candidates. Uh, the vote's taking place today, tomorrow, and Saturday. And the results will be Saturday evening uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, through, from the Wall Center. And uh, we'll be watching those carefully here at BIV and reporting on it. I'm Kirk LaPointe, publisher and editor-in-chief. Thanks a lot for watching.